do the state they have a right to impose this jail ban on women or not? So right. that's my question. Yeah. So, uh, like I was saying, okay, b before we look at it from the Islamic perspective, I want to look at it from the secular perspective. There's a reason why. Mm -hmm. The reason is because who are the main people objecting to all of this? They are secular people. Whether they're secular Iranians, whether they're secular Christians, atheists, it doesn't matter. But, but it's secular-minded people who are telling us that this religious dress, this hijab, this religious dress, why is the state imposing it? So m one argument that I have, not that we are defending the Iranian regime, just like ladies who don't wear the hijab properly get shut down in Iran, you and I would get shut down in Iran too for doing this, for talking about Islam, for talking about Sunni Islam, or even just talking about Islam in general without the express approval of the government of the Iranian regime, we would get shut down. This wouldn't happen. So we're not like we're not supporters of the Iranian regime. This has to be clear. Um, but we have to be fair to everybody. We have to be fair. So the secular people who are objecting, they themselves would agree. They themselves would acknowledge that states and governments do have the right to impose a minimum clothing on people. So every country that you can think of, Canada, America, Britain, where all of these secular Iranians run to, where do they run to? America, to England, to Germany? Is there not a minimum dress that is imposed by the government? There is. Yeah, so uh, now this sounds, of course, like an extreme uh, uh, example, but we have to give extreme examples to, uh, to illustrate the point. If I strip down naked right now, if an Iranian stripped down naked in New York City, what will happen? They will be forced to cover up. At some point, they will be fined or they will be arrested. They will be warned, right? Uh, because every city has its own version of morality police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> police are enforcing morality. They have their own version of morality and vice, you know, police and whatnot. So, so by that standard, this would be my counter question to secular people that if you are acknowledging that the government has a right to enforce some minimum clothing, how do you know what that minimum clothing is? Who said that it's just this? Why is it only the genitals? Why is it in many Western countries women cannot expose their breasts? Yeah. Breasts are not part of the sexual anatomy per se. Breasts are something men have as well. Men have breasts, men have nipples. So I, t I can take off my shirt and show my <laughs> breasts. Yeah. Uh, why can't a woman do that? That's certainly not gender equal. That's yeah. certainly not gender neutral. So. Um, I, I don't know what good answer a secular person can give other than it depends on the customs of the land. It depends on the cultural sensitivities of the people in that society. By that standard, Ahi, we can say, well, by the cultural sensitivities and by the cultural standards of Yemen, the Yemeni government should make sure that w women are also covering their hair. By the cultural sensitivities of Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, well, then the government should uh, uh, enforce that level of clothing, even by secular standards, even by secular so, standards. Okay, uh, so, so I'll, I'll continue. Yeah. Now, but as Muslims now, as Muslims yes. now, we want to know that does Allah give the right yeah, that's to, to I yeah, yeah, I know. That's what but I wanted to clarify that first point too. Uh, does Allah give an Islamic uh, government the right to enforce that clothing? So in all honesty, I've made the disclaimer already. I'm no scholar, I'm no expert. But from, from the little bit that I've looked into this, I did not find anything very clear in the Quran or in the Hadith. I didn't find anything very clearly that would say that the Sultan or the Hakim can like enforce this, you know, if a lady doesn't do it. I think, I was listening to a scholar the other day, that scholar said that throughout Islamic history, it was enforced, but on a micro level, not on the macro level. It didn't have to be done by the government because families, villages, societies, communities, they made sure that their daughters and their sisters dressed in a certain way. And in those societies, the women couldn't even imagine dressing in another way. Just like in London, no woman here, no matter how secular she is, no matter how liberal she is, how atheist she is, she can never dream of taking off all of her clothes. She, unless she's crazy. She can never dream Some of stripping. Of them, there is <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? 99.999% yeah, will never even think of taking off all of their clothes. The culture. Yes. So it's not really the British government that on a practical level has to enforce it. On a practical level, it's the social pressure, society, customs that ensure that women and men don't completely strip down naked, you know, in England. 
Now, in case we do, then the police will step in, right? So historically, that's how it was done. But in the modern era where families are breaking down, where there's migration, where there's, what do you call it, gentrification, people are moving around. You don't have traditional extended families and villages enforcing this anymore. So this is in some ways a modern question. In some ways, this is a modern question that can the modern nation state, if it's an Islamic state, can they enforce this? And to be honest with you, I don't see why even from an Islamic perspective, why not? Okay. They, they can enforce red lights and green lights on the traffic lights. They can enforce that you're not chewing gum uh, in a government building. They, so I, I, my, my, I'm finishing my answer very quickly that I think it, it is quite possible and plausible that if the government takes on that responsibility and says that they're going to enforce this, they can. However, I want to say one thing about Iran. You can only enforce something when it's already in line with the beliefs and the values and the culture of a people. You cannot, would we ever think of enforcing hijab in London on, 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 on these? We, we couldn't because their values and their belief system is not in line with ours. I suspect this is the situation in Iran, unfortunately. I suspect okay, I, I the majority of women don't seem to want I, enforced hijab. I don't want really to focus in Iran, right? Because you really clarify that, that killing a woman because she doesn't wear a headscarf or jeans. Yeah, that, that's a crime. That, it's a crime. Okay, yeah, so it's that's, a crime. Yes, yeah. we move on. It has something to do with Islam in that it's a crime. Yeah. Islam says so it's a crime. The second point is that does, 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 uh, does, that did Allah Azza wa Jal, for example, give authority to the state to impose the jilbab on, on, on women? And you says maybe explicitly no. Yeah, okay. I, I'm not aware. Uh, do you agree that if woman leave, left the house without jilbab or sh exposing her body, that is, you know what is a munkar mean, like an evil? Do you agree that this is a munkar or? Not? Oh, that of course. 100%. That of, of course, okay. of course. There is verses in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal He commands us to remove munkar if we see. For example, there is a verse where Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran says, "Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas." That's, That's why we're the best of ummahs yeah. if we do that. So the, another verse where Allah says, Al wal mu'minat ba'dhum bil ma'ruf wa And the Prophet Muhammad says, uh, religion is a nasiha, is an advice. If you yeah. see something wrong, change it, right? By your hands. Which is that belongs to the authority, the authorities, the yes, government yes. or the husband inside the house. If you cannot change it, then change it by your tongue, which means speak and give advice. If you come by your tongue, by your heart, like like ask Allah to guide this person. So if we look at that's what I'm. Uh, so if we look at the Quran and the Sunnah, mm. that the government they have, yes, they have to make sure that women when they leave the house, they should dress like the way Allah Azza wa Jal commanded and not just for a Muslim woman by the way for the Muslim and the Christians and the Hindus and all the women because that's that's an evil that's a monker you understand and that will cause a lot of lot of uh, damage to the society and if we don't do that if, if the state they don't care anymore uh, why they don't care because maybe there is an outsider power let's say the United Nations they will threat this country or if you if you force a woman to cover we will sanction you or and the government says okay well, i'm not going to force them so which is this is going to cause less harm which that's that's a reasonable answer you understand but if the government lets the authority say we don't care mm -hmm. because there is no punishment in the quran of that i believe that's 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 this authority would be questioned at the day of judgment yeah, yeah, yeah. They would be questioned, but they might have an answer. As you said, they might have a yeah, reasonable yeah. answer or excuse. So, no, I agree with everything you said. And that's why I said that I didn't find anything explicit and direct. It doesn't mean that there's not something uh, that could be implicit that we could deduce from the Quran, of course. So what I meant was there's no like hudud punishment given in the Quran or in the hadiths for the lady not wearing the hijab in that sense. But you're right. Generally, under the category of prohibiting the evil, yeah, yes. the government could say, that look, I mean, this is part of sexual morality, public morality, we have to enforce this. So I'm agreeing with you in principle, but I'm just being honest with you. Yeah, I, I really feel, brother, that Iran is a very complex situation. We, we, I, I know, about, yeah, okay, but I am, yeah, but I am. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, because everyone will apply this to Iran. Everyone yeah. is thinking about Iran right now. Even you were ori originally thinking about Iran. So <laughs> Iran in particular, I feel that at this point, man, if they weigh out the, you know, maslaha and all that, it seems like they are turning their population more and more against Islam, unfortunately. So there has to be some basic talim, some basic education at this point first. And hijab is like step 10, man. It's, it's there, but it's not maybe step number one. I think they forgot about step number one, two, three, four, five. Because these people, they, they, 
after 30 years of living under a so-called Islamic regime, they should love the hijab, they should love the sharia, they should love Islam. The fact that they don't is, number one, we know that they have a different idea of sharia, of course, we're not Shia. But number two is they probably didn't even do their own job. Even even if I was Shia, I would say that this uh, my this Shia government has not done a proper job of, of sharing Shiaism with the so people. In your, so what is the since we agree that the state they have to remove evil and women live in the but house. the bigger evil right now is apostasy. You, I agree with you. Look at the, the Iranians that I meet in Canada. I'm telling you, like eight out of ten of them will just apostasy. say I'm ex-Muslim. I'm not even a Muslim. And then two will say they're Muslim now. What kind of Muslim? Allahu Alam. But I'm just happy to hear when they say they're Muslim. I say, Salaam Alaikum. No, but was, you agree with well, me? Salaam Alaikum, I say to them. So the state, they have a right to remove evil. Okay, we agree In principle, you. in yeah. theory. Yeah, so yeah, the state, yeah, yeah. if they say to women, for example, they made a law that women, when they leave the house, there is a certain dress that is as a sexual public or something. That's what you had to do. Now, Even under the, secular law. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if the woman should refuse to do that, yes. then she will receive a punishment, which we agree that is it not It cannot be sentence. death. It cannot be death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, it's the discretionary, so, yeah, whatever. So this, I think even though it, is, it didn't describe the punishment in the Quran or the Sunnah, yeah. but there's something called a tazir, which the state Discretionary, they, yeah. they decide. So, so I, as I told you, the death, death penalty is completely, yeah. or even like shaving the hair or cutting the hair, no. So probably she'll be arrested, maybe she'll have a fine or something, you know? Yeah. So this is an answer for those, because there are a lot of so-called Muslim liberals, yes, that yes, doesn't yes. make any sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. that no, the government, they shouldn't enforce the law. Okay, then, this, this so-called liberal Muslims, why are you enforcing, why are you asking the Jews and the Christians to pay the jizya? Well, they won't ask them for that either. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They'll how say can, all of that is. Uh, yeah, how can you answer the question? Finished. Why yeah. do you ask the Jews and the Christians to pay the jizya? It's mm -hmm. not by enforcing. We mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. Why the state they will uh, they will banish you if someone does not pray five times a day? You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone does not pray five times a day is is not a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And the state they will make sure that people they pray. They should make people that fast in Ramadan. They pay zakat to the state. If a Muslim says I don't want to pray, uh, don't pay zakat. You think the state they go ahead? It's between Allah. No. Abu Bakr as Siddiq the Allah one who them, fought right? them. If the Jews and the Christians they refuse to pay the jizya, just leave them alone. But as I told you, the state they should seek. If forcing someone to wear a hijab or to fast Ramadan, which is get worse and worse. Yeah. And they shouldn't. Do yeah, yeah. It, so, because there See, is power outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's why it's complex because yes. I think right now the biggest munkar right now is that whatever little bit of Islam they have left, whatever little bit of Islam, every Iranian can say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. At least they can say this. Even this they will lose it. Even this they will lose it. And they're going to fall right into the arms of the Islamophobes and the people who hate Islam. And now I'm hearing the Iranians, it started with just we don't like hijab, this and that. Uh, there's some bad mullahs, there's some good mullahs. It started with that. Yeah. Now they're falling into the arms of the anti-Islam, Islamophobes, and now they're repeating their arguments. Now they're talking about everything. This, that, uh, apostasy, and uh, marriage of Aisha. This, that, like, like, they're just repeating everything now. So th they've lost whatever little bit of Islam they had left, you know? Mm -hmm. So in my mind, the bigger munkar right now is to preserve the basic Tawheed. Islam or Kalima, is the, uh, the Tawheed, Tawheed that they have. Yeah. Before as they as become as atheists and agnostic, man. I agree with you that they fail big time. Just like in my own home, Aki, just like in my own home, I don't have a daughter. But if I had a daughter, would I enforce hijab on her? Of course I would. Of course I would. But what, uh, sorry, yeah? Yeah, yeah. enforcement, just to clarify, is not just taking jizya. No, 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 no. But just telling her, look, you live here, you're under my roof, I'm your dad, you have to do this when you leave the home. But once she reaches a, a certain age, if I saw, to be honest with you, if I saw, that she's becoming so rebellious. She's not praying now. She's starting to hate Islam. At that point then, I wouldn't be enforcing it in yeah, the same way. Not the, because I don't believe I should be enforcing agree, it, agree. but I'm like, right now, if I force, if I keep on pressuring her for the hijab, yeah. she's going to leave Islam altogether. I agree, so I'll yeah, just yeah. say, okay, it's between you and Allah. You, I've taught you what's right. Yeah. So now it'll become Nasiha now. I, I understand. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. I told you. So Iran you has should... reached this point now. They're rebelling yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, they shouldn't. As you said, yeah. if you have a daughter and you say, maybe she's going to rebel and leave the house and it get worse, maybe she leave Islam. Yeah. Start with like the basics, like Tawheed and this is a command from Allah, we go to paradise, this yeah. like it might make it nice to her. Okay. And then move on to fear her as uh, for punishment in hellfire, this mm. and you want you praise him and Allah guide her, probably she come back, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But this thing she should have done the, when it comes to a father, you have first of all you have to choose the right wife. You have to choose yeah, the righteous yeah. wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. Prophet Muhammad told us that 
Qad Qarbi that they did it very badly. You have to choose a right religious mm. wife, but she can help you. Yes, yes. And as you says, you have to be with your children, you have to be nice to them. Yeah, yeah, them. Yeah. When they grow up, they will love. Them. Right, right. If you just completely ignoring them, yeah, you choose yeah. like a, a half naked wife and she doesn't care, of course you will have problems. And I think this is what that Iranian regime yeah. seems to have yeah. done. It seems like they've enforced a certain morality on the people, and the people feel that these the government people themselves have not lived according to that morality they are guilty of corruption they are guilty of this so people's feelings are going to change then right against them so no, it's, it's unfortunate but you know Alhamdulillah. maybe something good will come out of the bad you know maybe things have to go bad before they get good again we don't yeah we don't uh, again yeah. this is uh, i mean yeah. killing someone because she doesn't wear a hijab that's yeah no the, uh, yeah we agree everyone agree. everyone yeah, knows yeah. that's a crime in islam and that's a crime no, that's in not, the that's secular not, That's life. not how they because some, some women, I don't know if they are Muslims or atheists, they start burning the headscarf or jilbab. Mm. I mean, is this the right punishment of, uh, of because of the stupid behavior of a police officer? You understand? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what has a headscarf or jilbab to do with the yeah. stupid behavior of police officer? You understand? Yeah. Some, yeah. some I saw videos, some people, they, they are attacking mullahs and they start throwing the... Yeah, yeah. The, the turbans away. Yeah. I mean, what's the difference? Well, well that, that's the that's the whole tragedy that in the minds of many Iranians, Islam and th their government are synonymous. It's one of the same thing. There's no difference. The the government is Islam. Islam is the Iranian government. Now you and I know that's not no, the case, yeah, but in their minds that's how it works. And you know, uh, we make dua. May Allah help the thank cause of so Islam. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, man, for no sharing. Problem. Thank you for sharing. Thank your, you very much.